uh, I just said that you were uh, an advisor to the to the government, to the Swedish government in the field, in the green field, let's say, if you, if you we call it very widely. Uh, and maybe I leave you the word. Sure. Thank you, and uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, so um, uh, I'm looking forward to present to you uh, some of the measures that have been taken in Sweden uh, to support uh, uh, sharing and repairing, um, in particular on the uh, consumer side. Uh, and me, myself, I'm, I, uh, I used to work as political advisor to the two last uh, ministers for financial markets and um, deputy minister of finance. Uh, and also one of them was also the minister uh, for consumer affairs. Uh, and in that role, I, I negotiated some of these policies uh, or followed up on some of these policies that I will present today. Uh, and what I was planning to talk about was um, uh, to, um, sorry, I need to put on, uh, was to, um, uh, I was planning to say, say a few words about what has been put in place and, and as I mentioned on the consumption side. So I will not talk so much about what has been done uh, on the industry side in, in relation to circular economy, et cetera, but mostly on the consumption side. Uh, and I will also say a few words at, about what has been in the pipeline uh, and uh, also briefly mention some other to some extent relevant political initiatives uh, in this area. What I will not present to you, however, is any kind of silver bullet on how to achieve a sharing economy or uh, 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 at once achieve a lot more repair, because I guess there's no silver bullet to achieve this, but rather it's a big piece, uh, a big puzzle, and uh, there's quite a few different pieces that we need to put together to uh, to make it more interesting for consumers to uh, repair, for example, to make it more um, profitable for companies to offer services in this regard and to raise awareness. Um, and among those pieces in this puzzle that I think are the easiest to, uh, to introduce that we have done in Sweden, uh, the lowest hanging fruits uh, are reduced VAT rates for certain repair services and tax exemption on uh, the rental of goods. Uh, and before I get into that, I think I'm obliged to say a few words about the political situation in Sweden as well, because it's been a bit turbulent uh, the last few years and especially the last few months and weeks. Uh, so some of the uh, policies and reforms that had been decided upon ha will not be introduced because the budget of the government fell in parliament. Uh, so that is why I will present to you some of the things that have been done, but also some of the things that were supposed to be done, but will not be done uh, next year, but maybe uh, later on. But let's begin then with one of the low hanging fruits, which is the reduced VAT rates uh, for repair services. So we introduced this uh, uh, first in um, 2017. We have uh, three different VAT rates in Sweden, 25%, uh, 12%, and 6%. So we reduced the t VAT rates for repairs of bicycle shoes, clothes, uh, leather, and household linen. Um, and the reason that we chose these areas is simply because those are pinpointed in the EU VAT directive. So that was the boundaries to, that we could, that we had to abide to. So we reduced it in January uh, of 2017, and uh, it will be reduced another time in July next year to the lower uh, VAT rate. Uh, and this has been quite popular among uh, companies in the private sector because it's very easy to, uh, to administer for them and it increases their margins and uh, make it easier for them to offer these kind of services. Um, I also think that when we introduced it, it also created uh, uh, quite some discussion about repair. So that was uh, maybe an added benefit to, to introducing this. 
Uh, and another uh, benefit of this is it, that it's quite easy to do. We don't need to change any law. We just need to lower uh, the, or include those in the lower those areas in the in the lower lower VAT rate. Uh, in the long term, the cost is estimated for this to about 250 million Swedish crowns. That's about 25 million euros. Uh, in reality, I think it's much uh, lower, especially in the beginning. Um, uh, so it's uh, it's uh, to some extent uh, 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 costly, but we also need to keep in mind that this these comp the companies in these areas are really the large majority of them are really small scale companies with zero to four employees. Um, so it's, uh, um, it's a tax uh, decrease that benefit really small businesses, uh, apart from also benefiting the repair services, etc. So that was the, that's the fir first one. Then we have uh, another um, tax deduction for repair services. Uh, this is a bit more complicated, um, uh, and it's basically that uh, if you use a repair service, uh, you get a deduction of 50% of the work cost, so like the hour cost of uh, the person uh, conducting the, the service, uh, you get the similar amount uh, of that in tax deduction. Uh, and that, the, that was done for... Um, services relating to computer and IT equipment and also domestic, larger domestic appliances like refrigerators or uh, um, uh, dishwashers, uh, etc. Uh, and this was introduced uh, in August 2016 and January 2017. Um, IT, uh, IT equipment was done first and then domestic appliances. Um, and the benefit with this for the consumer is that it's very easy to administer. You don't need to do anything. The, the invoice just comes out lower because the company needs to uh, do the administration in relation to the tax authority. So it really lowers um, the cost of these services and uh, the cost of these services is often uh, in large part uh, relating to the working cost. The problem with it is that it's only uh, services carried out in the homes. And this is because it's based on an existing tax deduction that we have um, relating to, well, to several different services like cleaning and uh, uh, fixing homes and stuff like that. So we just took that structure and um, introduced it for repair services. But the problem is that then the services need to be carried out in the homes. Uh, and for example, if you have a mobile phone and you want to fix the, uh, the screen of it, you, you don't ask someone to come home to your place to repair it. So, uh, um, so th that, that has, that's a reason to why it's not as big uh, as, for example, the, the uh, VAT uh, reduction. So currently, uh, the deduction for uh, domestic appliances costs about 30 to 40 million Swedish crowns, so that's about three to four million euros. Uh, it's a bit more for IT services, but it uh, but that's mixed with other types of services, so we don't have the exact figure. What we do know is that experiences from other similar tax deductions is that they increase over time as more people get to know about them. Uh, uh, they are used a lot more, uh, so uh, so we foresee that this will con continually increase. Uh, something that would have increased the tax, the, the use of this tax deduction quite dramatically would have been if we have, would have introduced um, a broadening of it uh, that was supposed to be put in place uh, next year, but was one of those things that because of the political situation, um, uh, unfortunately didn't happen this time around. Uh, and what was planned then was that we would have a tax deduction on more uh, repair services. So all kinds of household appliances, not only like the big uh, domestic appliances, but also smaller ones like a toaster or a vacuum cleaner. Uh, it would be on furniture, it would be on garden tools. Um, and more importantly, 
we would have expanded the tax deduction to include services that are not down, done in your home. Uh, and that would have probably be the big change. Uh, so now if your mobile phone would uh, break, you, you could um, uh, bring it to a repair shop and you would get a tax deduction for, for that. Uh, also, we would have included transport services. So those um, companies that are offering uh, uh, services where they come on, come to your home, pick up your uh, uh, your uh, appliance that needs to be fixed, uh, and take it and then send it back. Uh, also, the transport services would be included uh, uh, in the tax deduction. So this we would have foreseen that this would have been. Uh, would have increased the repair, the use of this tax deduction quite uh, dramatically. Uh, and who knows, maybe we could then also include more um, areas in it. There's some potential problems with this um, type of tax deduction uh, that was discussed when we, uh, when we um, was planning for it. Uh, and the main one is that if, if you have um, a lot of small deductions, uh, it's quite hard for the tax authority to control. So there's a risk of, uh, of uh, fraud. Uh, so you would need to put more resources into um, uh, controlling. Uh, and this also relates to uh, when we uh, offer, when we would offer this tax deduction for services conducted outside your home, uh, this risk also increase. Another thing we had planned for uh, was uh, a tax-free uh, rental of personal goods uh, up to uh, 20,000 kroners, so about 2,000 euros um, per year. Uh, so basically now, if you rent out some things you have, you need to, uh, you need to declare it to the tax authority. Um, and this, it, it often, it's often quite small figures, so it becomes an, a burden which might hinder some people to do it or might, might get some people not to care about renting out their stuff. Uh, so this is really like an incentive to get people to rent out their stuff that they're not using all the time. For example, me, uh, an hour ago today, uh, someone came and picked up um, some glasses I have because I had too ma many glasses. And I just put them out on this platform to rent it out and people come and pick it up to use it for their parties or uh, company events or whatever. I don't earn <laughs> much money from this uh, uh, and it becomes a bit uh, stupid basically to declare those small incomes that you make from these very small services. And most people, uh, many people might not even rent it out because of this. So the idea was just that's to say that up to this limit of 20,000 kroners, you don't have to care about any administration, just go out and rent it to people. Uh, you might know some of these figures, but a drilling machine, for example, it's used on average 15 minutes during its lifetime. So there's plenty of time for it to drill at someone else's home. Uh, and a private car is parked 95% uh, of the time. Uh, so there's plenty of time where the, that car could actually transport other people. And I think when it comes to private cars, it might be, have been the biggest effect of this uh, tax-free rental because uh, 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 it's becoming more expensive to own a car and, um, and more difficult to find parking space, etc. And then if you instead could rent, easily rent cars uh, from uh, other people, uh, less people would actually get a car. We had discussed also to follow the area in case we needed to put a limit on what kind of cars that could be included in the tax, uh, in this tax-free rental uh, so that uh, it would not make it too uh, profitable to own um, environmentally uh, bad cars. Uh, but I, I don't think that would have been a problem in, in the end because it's much easier to rent out um, a new uh, electric car than, than uh, an old diesel car uh, in any case. Uh, then we have some other relating measures. So um, 
a few years ago, we, uh, and we put a tax on chemicals in electronics. So it becomes like a consum consumption tax on electronics. So that would, um, that's on the, kind of on the other side uh, of the spectrum that we make it more expensive to buy new electronics and uh, cheaper to fix your old electronics. Uh, and the same thing when it comes to what I discussed on cars, we also changed the, the tax rules on cars. So uh, the taxes on new cars that are not uh, chargeable uh, has increased dramatically. Uh, and the, the ones on uh, the sales on electric cars have uh, get, get a bonus. So uh, we increased the, the, uh, the car sales on electric cars dramatically. So now, uh, more than half of the new car sales are, are chargeable in, in Sweden uh, due to that. Um, then we also changed tax rules on company car ownership and fringe benefit cars, which made, uh, which made a lot of people to own a car even if they didn't really need it because it was beneficial uh, tax-wise. On the other end of the spectrum, we then uh, uh, made it more prof more um, affordable uh, and uh, to uh, to get the benefit uh, as a bicycle from your from your company, and previously we also had a bonus on the el uh, electric uh, bicycles. Uh, and then what I promise not to talk about, uh, we also have some other initiatives to support industry invest investment in cir uh, circular economy, because obviously not one uh, piece in this puzzle is, is enough. So we need to do a lot of different things. Uh, one thing that was also supposed to be introduced if we would have not had this uh, turbulent political times in Sweden uh, would have been a tax on chemicals uh, in clothing uh, and we would exclude secondhand clothing from, from this. So that would be quite similar to the tax on chemicals in electronics. It becomes a consumption tax on new clothing uh, at the same time as we make it uh, more affordable to repair your old clothing. Uh, so, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, there's many things that could, could be done, a lot more things than we have done in Sweden. Uh, uh, but from what we have done in Sweden, I think that the, the, the easiest ones to do is the reduced VAT rate and the tax exemption for rental of personal goods. It's very easy to, it's not complicated um, uh, legis legislative, Relatively, uh, and it's uh, it's easy and fast to introduce. Now we also have a new VAT directive coming up, so there might be a bit more uh, possibilities in that to increase the scope. But uh, we'll have to look into that later. And this is my um, basically my main message then from uh, my presentation. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions now, I'll be happy to ask them. And if you have any questions later, you're welcome to email or phone me to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Ludwig, for your presentation. I think it was very interesting. I hope also for our audience. Uh, and I would invite the audience maybe to pose some questions. I will already have two questions, so maybe Three questions. <laughs> As I said, I was expecting it and I hope that we will have a nice conversation. So go ahead. Can I ask? Yes. Can you hear me? Is it okay? The sound? Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering uh, so about these uh, taxes. Um, and as you mentioned, the chemicals in the textile that uh, was in plan. Um, how did you how did you uh, prepare the, um, the administration behind? So how can somebody prove that something is secondhand or something is new? So as a company, and how could they uh, prove that something is, is not new, so they would not pay the, this uh, tax on chemicals. That's, uh, that's an excellent question, and it's been uh, one of the most contentious issues <laughs> relating to this tax. Um, so basically, the, the, um, uh, the tax um, lawyers, they're not so happy about this kind of exemption because they're afraid it would open up uh, a possibility to cheat uh, uh, 
um, and and we have we have not currently had that exemption when it comes to the electronic tax, which is quite similar. Um, uh, but basically, you would need to uh, to show that that it is secondhand if you want um, uh, if you want to be excluded. The tax in itself is is structured in a way that uh, you can be excluded from part or the whole tax if you can show that you don't have certain chemicals in uh, your clothing or in your electronics. So it's the same process where you either you have to prove that you either don't have these chemicals or it's a secondhand product. So you have to prove it through different type of documentation. Uh, and but it's it's the structure of the tax opens up for it because it's there's already a possibility to be ex to be exempted from the whole tax. Just a question. So uh, is it somehow that this, the companies that sell used goods do they have any special status or some special you know that they are registered as selling goods? Or is this done by each product? So can the company sell new and used goods? Or so it's a lot of administration in behind this certification. Or is how did you think about this? Yes. So it's and that's one of the criticism to to this tax that it becomes, uh, especially when it comes to the clothing part, uh, that it it becomes like an administrative burden uh, that could be quite big, especially for smaller uh, companies. Um, but they, it's it's not linked to uh, to the company status because some companies do both, uh, which complicates things. Actually, I think it would it would be easier uh, to do it on to make the exemption for uh, secondhand electronics because it's it's easier to prove um, than when it comes to secondhand clothing because you also have the problem with. Uh, with, for example, large uh, companies like H&M, they might have a lot of clothing that they haven't sold, and then they kind of resell it. But that should not, that should maybe not be a reason for a tax exemption. So, so the 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 clothing tax, it's quite complicated. The electronics, it's easier. But but uh, in all of these, it's uh, it's difficult when it when it's put in place. But then. Um, structures for uh, for controlling and doing this uh, from the companies becomes more and more efficient that's our experience anyways uh, so I think that would happen when it comes to clothing as well thank you thank you so we can proceed with the next question yes hello my name is Shiva um, you talked about the um, money that will not be paid in taxes, which is kind of a negative impact, could we could say, but there must be a positive impact as well, in the sense of new companies opening up, uh, people actually using more of these uh, used or repaired um, items. Uh, do you measure that? Do you have any information on that? Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's very hard to measure. So that's why we don't have like this Clear cut figure. Uh, when it comes to to reducing a tax level, there's there's already like a standard that the that the Ministry of Finance used to to estimate the cost, uh, which sometimes is true, sometimes not. But but anyways, it's very we always get a figure. Uh, um, but all of these other effects uh, are much harder to to measure, and it's also hard to measure uh, how much of uh, how much of it that is due specifically to this tax or that could be done due to other other reasons. There's more discussion and awareness about repairing, for example. Maybe that's the real reason that uh, this company that repair clothes get to employ more people. Uh, that's very hard. So that's very hard to measure. What we know is that the companies themselves, they obviously prefer the VAT rate because they say that that's what makes it easier for them. Um, and we also know that uh, as these kind of really small uh, businesses, uh, the margin is often much smaller, uh, uh, also when it comes to employing new people. So um, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a wild guess that there will be a lot of positive effects. 
Um, another factor uh, is that if they don't repair, then they will buy it. They will buy something new, probably. And this new product is uh, usually not produced in Sweden. Uh, so it's usually the value added from, from the production of that doesn't end in Sweden. That's probably in China or somewhere else where they produce the new product. So uh, if we get more people to repair, it might actually be good for, this, for, for the Swedish economy as well. That's more of the, the production is done in Sweden, basically. Thank you. We have a third question. Hello, my name is Nina. Uh, you mentioned uh, in the PowerPoint presentation that uh, you offer uh, support to industry that invests in circular economy. Can you elaborate on that? It's, yeah, so there's been, a, it's um, industry support, uh, so there's both uh, in terms of research, but also kind of demonstration um, uh, sites and larger investments that uh, the, the uh, government uh, could co-finance. It's not only relating to the circular economy, but also the circular economy. So we recently had some, some larger investments in, for example, uh, 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 I think it was recycling of plastic that was co-financed by, by this government program. Okay, so you have national funds for this or EU as well? Uh, yeah, these are national. I mean, there's EU programs as well, but uh, it, I, uh, what, from what I've seen, the companies are used, uh, in Sweden uh, in this sector uh, have more used the, the the Swedish support scheme. I think it, I guess from, from my side is that uh, some of these investments are not as huge as some of the EU funding needs to be. Uh, so they need smaller co-financing. Well, smaller, it's, it's still big, but not uh, as big as the EU sometimes offers. Thanks. Are there any other questions, points for clarification? Uh -huh, we have another one. Hi, uh, thank you for this presentation. Um, so it's very popular these days to introduce tax interventions. Um, but um, are there really like positive effects? Uh, don't you experience, and what are your um, uh, experiences? Um, uh, when, you, when you introduce tax reduction, isn't there uh, an increase in the price of the, of the service or, or the product? Of the product? Um, so, what are your experiences on that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that that could be the case, but um, it's it's also a case of um, uh, of a sector that that have very small margins. So, it might be that there's actually a good good reason for them to to be able to increase. Uh, um, the price a little bit to sustain uh, their company or to employ new people. Um, so um, it's not, it, it could be the case, but it's not necessarily so. Uh, then I think when it comes to, uh, that, that's, that's when talking about the VAT. Um, when it comes to the uh, the tax deduction, uh, the, what we've seen from, from other sectors that have had similar tax deductions is that they increase quite dramatically over time. So uh, there seems to be a case that, that actually a lot more people are using these services um, as there is a tax deduction that you can use. Um, uh, and there, these would, be, would often be people that wouldn't use them, the, the services at all. Uh, and I think that would really be the case when it comes to, uh, especially some of the um, smaller type of appliances, uh, like a vacuum cleaner or, or something like that, would, that most people would probably throw it away if it breaks. Uh, but if you, if you have this tax deduction and you have a sector that is growing, that could offer these services, um, uh, I'd, I'd, uh, then I think it actually it increases the, the use of these services. Um, 
and we've seen it increase over time. It's, it's a slow, it's a slow increase, but it's the same thing as we've seen on other sectors that we introduced. Thank you. Any other questions? Another one? I, I have just a question. Uh, so, uh, do you also have some tax reduction that are um, for the consum consumer? So, if he buys something uh, or he rents or he uh, donates, maybe, eh? does he have any tax reduction? And remember that you did something also on this field. Yeah, like so the. Yeah. Uh, I think, well, first, the, the, the proposal we, what we were supposed to introduce uh, next year uh, on um, uh, the, the tax exemption, if you, if you rent out something, uh, that's, I think that's the biggest one on consumers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but there's not, there's not any other kind of government schemes to get people to donate more uh, but it's done a lot by different companies and organizations so um, I don't think that's that's been the the uh, the big well and then apart from the uh, the whole uh, recycling scheme that the government has but when it comes to donating clothes and stuff that's um, that's done more and more by by companies and organizations so we don't have any scheme from from the government side and I should say that the tax deduction I talked about, it's actually a tax deduction uh, to the consumer, but the consumer doesn't have to administer anything. So, but you see it on your, on your tax declaration in the end of the year, you would see how much tax deduction you got from, from these services. Mm 